Your host is Bishop Abraham Olaleye. The anointed vessel the Lord has prepared to bring you this revival message. The man of God will be praying for you after this message. Stay tuned. Welcome one more time to your favorite program, Reviver in the Land, promoting righteousness, holiness, and the fear of God. The Bible says righteousness exalts a nation. And I'm so glad that God is blessing this nation with righteous people. Yeah, the challenges may be many, myriads of problems, but God in this time and hour is raising his own people, like the apostles and the prophets, the Nehemiah of this generation, who are builders. And, and, and I'm so excited about it. And that's why I'm so delighted today, I guess you heard, that I have a special guest, uh, a man who is envisioned by God as a builder, as a Nehemiah of this generation in a time that Nigeria is in dire need for dynamic leadership. Those who have gone through the four levels of water, who are sons of God manifesting the manifestations of the sons of God. Now, I'm not taking much time, but I want to introduce someone who is the visionary for Gemstone, a mission to a generation that is empowered, motivated, and stirred to operate with natural excellence. You know, God-given, you know, uh, uh, giftings. Gemstone Nation Builders Foundation, as it's called, is to get people that will become nation builders. And it's a Lagos-based, you know, ministry or an organization and that is reaching out to the entire nation, bringing the good message, transformation, reformation, which is the hallmark of revival. My guest is Fela Drotoye, uh, who is married to Tara, uh, blessed with three boys. And uh, Brother Drotoye, it's good to have you on Revival in the Land. Bishop, it's my greatest pleasure to see you every time and to be with you always. So Thank it's you very much. Thank God for your life and uh, the good works uh, the Lord has been using people like you to do. I say people like you because there are few other people doing what you are doing. But uh, God has, you know, given you an edge over the years because of your consistency and the spirit with which you have been doing this. And I remember in those days when we watched 700 Club, they would say journalism with a different yes. spirit. Yes. So it's good to do good things. Yes, but when you do it with the spirit of, of the living God, it makes a lot of difference. Thank you so now, much, sir. This is very exciting to me, and you know, heard about Felladru to you every now and then, everywhere, about nation building, about, you know, not, not political party, no, 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 but about nation building, and I want this excited, but the question is, can you tell us about this vision? How do you come about this gemstone, empowering, motivating, and steering people to operate with excellence, gemstone, nation builders, foundation. Can you tell us how you came about this vision? Uh, I, to, to, to do that very quickly, I have to tell you a little story, sir. And um, it, it dates back to, uh, to 2004. Um, on November 23, 2004, I was actually in my office. And at that time, my office was downstairs. My home was upstairs. And uh, I was in my office, and I sensed a very strong call to go into my to my to my home or my room to pray. Um, this was in the afternoon, so I, I went up, and by the time I got into my bedroom, I sensed the presence of God fill up the room. And in the course of that conversation, um, God said to me, uh, after having taken me through the second stanza, and I didn't know because he didn't tell me it was second stanza. Mm -hmm. He was just asking me if I did this, if I, mm -hmm. you know, if, if I gave a, a, the nation a noble cause, you know, what will happen? Do you know what a noble cause is? I said, no. He said, it's a cause that is greater than everyone. It's something you live for, but it will continue to live after you have left. Wow. Um, he said, if I give all the good leaders good guidance, he said, would you have corruption in the land? I said, no. He said, would you have failed businesses? I said, no. He said, would you have have uh, 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 children born out of wedlock? I said, no. And then he went on and took each one of those lines. By the time he was done, he said, do I still answer prayers? I said, yes. He said, what if I answered that prayer? What would it be? Wow. And I said, if it, it would be a, a beautiful place, it would be a paradise. Heaven on earth. Heaven on earth, sir. And he said, do you recognize that prayer? I said, no. He said, that's the second stanza of the national anthem. I said, oh my God. And he said, but the, the problem is, if I still answer prayers, why hasn't that prayer been answered? 
And I, I thought, well, probably because we're not praying. He said, that's right. He said, we're singing, but we're not praying. Cut the long story short, God said to me, now write this down. And it was exactly 10 minutes past 2 um, on, on, on November 23, 2004. He said, go and tell the people that by December 31, 2025, Nigeria will be undoubtedly the world's most desirable nation to live in. Wow. Bishop, um, I, I didn't say well, sir. Um, I, I said amen, no... And what yes. I meant by a man who was very sarcastical. Yes. Well, because, because, I mean, can this, because at that time, the movement for the actualization of the, South, uh, of the sovereign state of Biafra, Masob, had issued the Biafran pound. The CBN governor had declared that it was an illegal tender, yet they were using it in three cities in the east. The movement for the emancipation of the Niger Delta had said that they were no longer going to be an agitation group. It was not working for them. They were going to become a militant group. Therefore, they had issued a communique saying all the expatriates should leave the Niger Delta area, they were no longer going to be safe. For the first time, we started seeing the blow up of pipes. In 2004, the Odua People's Congress had said to President Obasanjo at that time that if they did not release Ganyu Adams and Frederick Fashion, that they were going to literally blow up the Southwest. The Arawa Consultative Forum had said if the next president after Obasanjo was not a northerner, this Nigerian experiment was over. On top of that, the Central Intelligence Agency of the United States had also said that they had given Nigeria nine, 15 years for it to become a failed state and that we were going to break up into four republics, Arewa Republic, Kalabari Republic, Biafra Republic, and Odua Republic. So within the context of all these things that I knew, Nigeria was under such dark clouds, almost like today. So. Yes, sir. And, and to hear God say to me, and Nigeria will not be the most desirable nation to live in 2025, I, I said amen. No, for me, it was the amen of Sarah. But what but, but God said to me, sir, in a very stern voice, he said to me, I do not pray. Who will I pray to? And I became more serious. He said, my son, I'm not a prophet. I speak through prophets, but I'm not a prophet. Wow. He's greater than, he's, he is the prophetic. He's, he is the prophet. That produces the prophet. Indeed, sir. And then he said something. He said, your past, your present, and your future are all in my present. That is why I am that I am, not I was when I used to be. Oh, boy. Then he said to me, he said, when I speak to you about 2025, I'm not telling you what I'm going to do. I'm telling you what I have done, all right. but which you may see. Mm -hmm. Now, I then said to him, Lord, what would you have me do? He said, go and build me the people that will build the nation. Fast forward, sir, a few months, May 2005, it was actually 25th of May, I was sitting down in a meeting with two young gentlemen. And at one point in time, one of them was speaking to me. I could see his mouth moving, but I couldn't hear a word. So for a moment, I thought maybe I had lost my hearing. And then I heard, gemstone. I said, what is gemstone? It says, a generation that is empowered, motivated, and stirred wow. to operate with natural excellence. He says, go and raise me that generation of leaders. They are the ones that will build the nation shape their continent and shake the earth positively for me. I, I know what excites me about your revelation. It's so specific and so direct that you even have the dates Sir, of, of the dealings of God, you know. It, it, they, they, were, they were not things that were, I mean, in a sense, with the gemstone mandate, I had to ask the gentleman. I said, did you hear what I just heard? They said, no. I said, I just heard gemstone. And so there were witnesses there, just in case God wanted me to see. I mean, the first one, obviously, I wrote it down. I put the date. I put the time. The second one was very clear. I had witnesses there. So, so the point is, uh, we are here as an, uh, on an, as an organization to raise leaders of excellence, who excellence will be a second nature to. People like you, sir. Mm -hmm. But they will be in all spheres of the society. Mm -hmm. You will find them in business. You'll find them in ministry. You'll find them in public service. You'll find them in the, in the bureaucracy of, of the civil service. You'll find them in academia. You will find them everywhere. But all, also, you will find them at every age group. Mm -hmm. So that from the age of, of five, six, a child already begins to understand what it means to be a leader of excellence, to be somebody who, who appreciates how to be an exemplary leader and somebody who lives by core values. Now, this is, this is very interesting to me because there are some questions here <laughs> that I, I said I was going to ask you. Yes, um, now, this is amazing that um, you are working on a long-term project. So because, like I said, God is not a, a, a firefighter, no. you know, no. who suddenly finds an accident, no. a fire, a house is on <laughs> inferno, and is rushing there to put out the fire. He plans ahead. Everything. And I'm so excited when God is talking about 2025, because I was saying recently that 
Dubai has become the destination of most people in the world. Absolutely. You know? And if it can happen there, much more it can happen here because you have all it takes. But we need the type of leadership, you know, a breed of new generation that God can trust. People like Daniel's company. But let, let's get this question. Can you tell us about values infusion project? Okay, sir. The values infusion I mean, project. Because I've heard you talk about this yes, so many Yes, times. indeed. <laughs> the values infusion project is really one of the key things that Gemstone Nation mm -hmm. Builders Foundation is carrying out. Um, and I, I need to quickly be, put a background to this. Sir, it is not every country that is a nation. Mm -hmm. Exactly. Uh, and, uh, and in a sense, we have to understand that there are countries that are not nations. Okay. And there are nations that sometimes do not have countries. Ooh. And I'll give you an example very quickly. Okay. So, 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 for instance, the Jewish state, the Jewish people yeah. were seen as a nation. They were recognized by the world, by the United Nations, as a nation before 1948 when they actually settled yes. in the land of Palestine. Officially, uh, in, you know, recognized uh, uh, state. So, 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 in a sense, that was a nation without a land. Today we see countries like, like say, for instance, Sudan, who was a, which was a large landmass, and, land, land. and, and then in, in, on May 9, 2011, South Sudan came out of Sudan. Exactly. Okay? More recently, you will see places like Crimea, yeah. that was part of Ukraine. Part of now Ukraine. it's part of Russia. Yeah. The land has not changed, but the, but the ownership. So this is what I'm trying to say. Sir, the, 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 the challenge that every generation has is how do we take the country, which is just land, and turn it into, into a, a nation, nation, which is people? So it, hmm. now, country to, which is land is just land to a nation which is now of people. Now, if you look at what God said to Abraham, God said to Abraham, "I will make you a person, a great nation. I will give you land unto your descendants." So, land is given; nations are made; they are built. So you can look at it and say, an effective nation, a great nation, has three things in common. Okay. Number one, they must have a common sense of purpose. Okay. They must believe that this is the reason why we are alive at this time. Okay. Number two, they must have a common sense of vision. This is what we are working on, and when we succeed, this is what it will look like. Number three, they must have a common and a shared sense of of values and your values are those things that you are, that define what is wrong and what is right what is good and what is bad what is acceptable what is not what should happen is that regardless of where we come from in the country mm -hmm. for us to be an effective and a great nation we all have to have a common sense of what is right and what is wrong mm -hmm. we have to have a common sense of what is good and what is bad this is good now so but that as you see we are different we have different backgrounds we have different languages we have different religions, you have different gender. What has to happen is that your value system has to cut across each one of these things. Mm -hmm. So that regardless of whether you are man, woman, female or female, uh, uh, whether you are from the north, south, whether you are Muslim, Yoruba, Christian, whether you are Muslim, Christian, whatever. you have to be able to say, truly, I buy into these values. There are things that I would like to show and there would like things I would like all of the people that are connected to me to show. Mm. And God gave me a, a set of values, sir, that really shocked me. I, I was going in a, in, a, in a taxi on the street of New York. York one day and, and God said to me pick up your pen and he started to he said to me to write I didn't even know how many things there were going to be and I'll run through them very quickly the first thing he said to me is that to build a great nation Nigeria I, we must get everybody to make a positive impact on everyone they meet and everywhere they go mm. number two positive impact number mm. two you must be a solution provider and not a part of the problem to be solved Ooh. number three you must be a role model worthy of emulation mm. number four you must be your best Mm. in all that you do, particularly the things you are naturally good at. Mm. Number five, you must do the right thing at all times, regardless of who is doing the wrong thing. Number six, you must value time and make the best use of it. And you can only imagine that if we do this, uh, this thing called African time will actually mean on time. Number seven, you must care and show respect through your words and your actions. Number eight, you must consciously build a great legacy starting now, today, and every day. Number nine, you must live a life of integrity and honor. And number ten, you must make your family, your nation, and your God proud. These ten values are, are values that transcend gender. Whether you are male or female, these are values you want to do. They transcend age gaps. 
whether you're young or old, these are the same values you want to have. They transcend language. They transcend religion. Whether you are Christian or Muslim or whatever, you will know that these values are supported by your, your religious mm -hmm. beliefs. Mm -hmm. Now, the last thing that I want to say, sir, is that now we are on a, on a mission to infuse these values into the consciousness of our nation. And how do you intend to do this, brother, Drew Toye? Well, sir, the, the values infusion process... Brother, sir, how do you intend to push <laughs> these, these values, values good. into a system that is bereft <laughs> of dynamic, sorry to use the word leadership, yes, sir. that his mindset, his focus is almost driven by greed yes, to have that Nigerians have developed an insatiable appetite, yes, sir. corruption. Yes, sir. So how do you intend to push this value? Yes, sir. Well, sir, I, you know, I was reading something that um, Albert Einstein said. Yeah. He said, in a sense, there really is no evil. It's the lack of good that makes evil. Ooh. He said there is no darkness. It is the lack of light that makes darkness. He said, he, he said so, he, he, you know, he said there is no bad. It is the, or there's no bad. It's the lack of good that makes it. Now, the, essentially what I'm saying, sir, is that where we have come to, is a natural consequence of the fact that good values have been taken out and subdued in our nation, right? So all we need to do is put those good values back and the people will change. Because to be able to transform a people, like the Bible says in Romans chapter 12, it says, be ye not transformed by, I mean, be ye not conformed to the patterns of the ye world, but ye transformed by the renewing of your mind. So, sir, it is the renewing of the mind that will transform individuals across our country and turn them into nation builders who will accept responsibility for the well-being of the nation, who will believe in the greatness of Nigeria and, be able, and their capacity to make it happen, who will commit their time, their energy, and their resources, and to do something to deliver the future of Nigeria. To do this, we need to transform the mind frame of these people. And this is why we are doing something called the Values-Based Leadership Training Program. Hmm. Value -based. Is Values-Based Leadership, leadership Training. Program. So we are training people to understand that, listen, you don't need a position to be a leader. You are listening to me out there. You are listening to Bishop Olale. It is not until you become a, a manager that you become a leader. In actual fact, it's become, it, it, because you become a leader that your organization will identify you and promote you to become a manager. It shouldn't be the other way around. So what we are teaching is how do you become a leader right where you are today? A leader is someone who, who has a mentality of responsibility. A, a leader, mentality of responsibility. Yes, sir. A, in, in other words, somebody who says the, the country that I will live in and the country I will give to my children is partly my responsibility. So take responsibility it's not, it's not just for the government to fix it. It is for me to fix it. And many times that transformation must start with me first. I must be the change that I want the rest of the world to see. You know, it's like last week when I was, uh, uh, you know, ministry on this uh, uh, program, you know, we sing those songs in those days, Lord, send down river and let it start with me. So it's so easy for us to, to pass the ball, yes, to blame somebody else. Absolutely. But, so you are saying this is a joint responsibility. Uh, anyway, uh, I'm believing God that next week you'll be back on this program to yes. be able to put more questions across to you because I see the role of the educational institution Absolutely. so much in this because uh, it's almost like drawing a syllabus yes, sir. to to affect Nigerians, to change their mindset, their thinking, and um, uh, even in the church, so that we can change the egocentric mentality of needing God, wanting God to do something for us, making God a means to an end, yes. instead of being an end, end in, in himself. In itself. Uh, and so what, what I want us to do very briefly, just take this last two minutes to... Uh, maybe give us one of the things or the ways you are looking at establishing and accomplishing this dissemination or dissemination of these values 
Are you talking to universities? Are absolutely, you at sir. work with the Ministry of Education or something? Uh, absolutely. Um, right now, we are taking the values through educational institutions, and already we have leadership, what you call value clubs or values leadership clubs in, in 70 secondary schools across Nigeria. Wow. By the end of this year, we will have in 300 secondary schools. We already have values clubs uh, called Leaders Connect in, in 30 universities in Nigeria. We already have in 26 states across Nigeria what you call the nation builders chapters. More this is where the people. The so, 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 sir, we are we are taking the values and passing it through the educational system. But there are also religious institutions that gather people together um, regularly, and we have to be able to pass it through them. And that's why even yesterday um, we we were very honoured to have the first and our inaugural value based leadership training run at the the um, uh, uh, GLA Guiding that's Light right, Assembly, right. and you were there, sir. So and, 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 and the and the the point is we are now calling on churches to say if you like your, the, the congregation to be able to imbibe these values that I've just written because they're going to be beneficial not only to the to the people ultimately to the church but if you like like the people to have it we have a, a train the trainers program and if you just connect with us whether through through the numbers that are going to be showing you on screen mm. you can actually just let us know we will train the people and I'm going to say this uh, this is very big for free for free. It is a leadership training. We have developed the curriculum. It is one of the very best curriculums in the world. I have been teaching and I've been a very successful consultant, leadership consultant, teaching all over the world. And now we have developed something based on those values that we are training and we are empowering people to learn how to go and run them in their organization. So corporate organizations can call us and say, mm. Fela, we want to partner with you to extend these values infusion into our Nigeria. Sir, so our goal is to train one million people in Nigeria this year for free. Now, this is exciting. This is, I mean, mind-blowing. And this is very, very excellent. And I see the spirit of, of God already at work. I see the Nehemiah anointing and grace upon our brother. I see the Daniel's spirit and grace uh, that made him such a unique leader, Joseph such a unique leader. And they were a privilege to bring solutions to precarious situations in their time. Now I'm going to take a short break and immediately I'm back. I'm going to ask Brother Fela to look straight to you and speak a word to you. Now I believe that the training has started in earnest and I believe is the reason why you are privileged to be watching this program right now. You will be speaking a direct word to your life and you are going to be listed into God's end time army bringing the change and bringing into manifestation and fulfillment the prophecy that God has spoken. And I'm so excited that there is hope for Nigeria. Even as the election is drawing closer, despite all the challenges, the election is going to come, a winner is going to emerge, and the purpose of God for this nation shall be established. So don't go away yet. We'll be right back in a moment. God bless you. It's time for the man of God to pray for your salvation, healing, and miracles. He will also pray for you to cut this revival fire. Welcome back. Now, before we close this program, I would like Brother Fela Drew to, you, to look straight to the camera because I know you are enjoying this program, you are challenged by this program, and you want to be listed, you want to be an instrument that God can use to bring change, social reform, you know, uh, to this land. So that we not just have a land as a country, as he rightly said, but a people, nation driven people. So, Brother Fela, can you just look straight to this camera and you'll be talking to millions of our viewers what God has placed in your mind in this one minute? Well, let me quickly say within the one minute that you are alive for a reason. The reason why God didn't bring you in 1725 into this land or in 2060, you weren't born at that time, is because God wanted you to make a difference to your land at this time. So I need you to understand something very quickly, very, very quickly, that you are a leader sent to change your world and deliver a better nation to your children than the one that you got from your parents. Now, to this end, I need you to get this right. Leaders are people who are driven by a value system. And the, one of the most important things is that your values will determine your value. Meaning that the, the stronger your values, the better the kind of person you will be because it would affect your decisions, your actions, and your, 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 your results. 
as people see you, your reputation will change, and most times the amount of people to, or money that people want to give to you will also change. This is the most important thing. You have to, to strengthen your values. Wow. And, and the value that I just want you, just one of them to say, make a positive impact on everyone you meet and everywhere you go. Remember, you can make a positive impact. That means you leave a good mind, a good memory to people. You can make a negative impact. That means when people have left you, they remember you. They don't even want like. They don't like yeah. you. But the most important one is that you can also make a nil impact, meaning you can come into the earth and go and nobody will know you came. But I want to say to you, make a positive impact. Hallelujah. If you want to learn how to do this, we have the value-based leadership training. If you want to run it for your organization, your church, please get in touch with us. Um, you want to, you want to uh, sign up for the values, go to gemstonengorg God bless you. Wow, this is very exciting to me, coming at no better time than a time such as this in Nigeria when we are, are going to the polls to elect leaders and some of these things will begin to have bearing in our national life. Where we will not be expecting any miracle now in the next few years, but I believe that this project is already on ground and God is going to use it in a very mighty way. I want to encourage you to continue to watch Reverend in the line and I know that your question is bring back this man and exactly that's what we're going to do next week and you will be mightily blessed as he comes to share more with us and takes us forward in the things that god is doing once the lord has spoken david said twice he heard that power belongs to god god is bringing a change and brother Fela, thank you for coming and next week we're expecting you back on this program i would be my honor to be back and sir. until that okay. time remain blessed remain revived remain revolutionized challenge and god bless you thank you for watching revival in the land i believe you've been greatly challenged and blessed by today's message god bless you this is revival in the land catch the fire